Hello guys, welcome to another IGCSE Biology video. Today we'll be looking at diffusion and osmosis. And I'll be explaining what they are and how they affect the cells. So, what is diffusion? Well, it is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of a lower concentration down a concentration gradient. To understand diffusion, I have come up with the analogy of a slide. As you can see, the particles here are high above the slide, and due to the concentration gradient, in, in this case the slope of the slide, they will move down to the lower side here. And, and here's an animation for it. So as you see, this slope of the slide made them to run at a certain speed. Had the slope been more steeper, they would have been falling down more quicker. And this is exactly the same for diffusion as well. The greater the concentration, uh, the greater the difference in the concentration gradient, the higher the rate of diffusion. So also imagine if these particles, instead of uh, running, uh, instead of uh, going normally, they push themselves in the slide. They will go faster, and this is the same. Uh, for diffusion as well. If the particles have more energy they will move down the slide more faster and this energy is usually gained in increasing the temperature. So therefore increasing the temperature has uh, increases the rate of diffusion because the particles have now gained more kinetic energy. So now let's move on to osmosis. So what is osmosis? Osmosis is a type of diffusion. It's no, It's not very different to diffusion but it is very similar to it. The slightest difference is it is the movement of water. It is a movement of water from a dilute to a more concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane. The key term here is partially permeable membrane and is very important uh, for osmosis. A, a membrane uh, is like a net okay, and uh, only some objects uh, can be caught in that net and some objects will go through and this is exactly the same for the partially permeable membrane. In the process of osmosis only water goes through that net and the bigger molecules like sugar stay back. An example of this can be seen in grapes. As you can see the dry grapes here have been uh, uh, diluted with water and uh, because the concentration of uh, uh, water is very little inside these grapes, the water moves into the grapes and, and therefore making them swollen. There are key terms that you need to remember for osmosis and here they are. As uh, many of you would know, hypo means less. So when the when a solution is hypertonic, the concentration of solutes outside the cell is less than inside the cell, and therefore water moves into them. The key term that people always forget is all these tonics talk about outside first rather than the inside. If you get it confused, the then you'll write the wrong answer because if you think hypertonic, if and uh, if hypertonic meant inside the cell is less than outside the cell, then water will move out of the cell. But that's not the case. Hypertonic means the concentration of solids outside the cell is less than inside the cell, so water moves into them. Isotonic means the concentration is same, so therefore there is no osmosis. That's the simplistic um, term uh, you need to remember. Uh, for hypertonic, the concentration of solutes is greater and so water moves out of the cell. You can, under you can see this because if you apply the rules of uh, diffusion, the water, would move, the water would move from an area of high concentration to an area of uh, lower concentration. And in, in this case, because the solution is hypertonic, it will move outside the cell because the concentration of solutes outside the cell is greater. Um, it's, it's quite hard to get your head around this, but it's very important for IGCSE biology. So let's now move on. These are, this is how cells behave 
in when you put them in uh, these hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solutions. As you can see here, the animal cells burst when they are in the hypertonic solution, and they are normal in an isotonic, and they shrink in a hypertonic because water has moved outside, so there is no water inside. Hence, the reason why they shrink. In a plant cell, when it's hypertonic, the um, they get plasmolysized. These terms are very important to remember. You need to remember these terms for this AQA specification, guys. Um, so, in a hypertonic, they are plasmolysized, and in an isotonic, they're flaccid. And in a hypertonic, they get turgid as because the water moves into them. But you may be wondering why the plant cells doesn't burst, but the animal cells do. Well, here's the reason why. Animal cells have a cell membrane, which isn't strong. As I said to you earlier, remember a cell membrane is like a net. It's not really strong, so it can break quite easily. However, a cell wall, and as the name suggests, is quite strong. And so it prevents the plant cells from bursting. Instead, what happens is turgor pressure is built. And this turgor pressure is very important to keep the leaves and stems rigid. I'll discuss about the turgor pressure in a later video. Uh, apart from this, this is the key concept for osmosis and diffusion. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And if you did, please subscribe and like. Thank you very much.